Welcome to another tutorial. So today we'll be learning how to draw some iconic buildings of Singapore. So what I need to do first is to divide your paper into four parts. Okay, so divide into half like this and divide into half again. Okay. Divide by half. And we're gonna divide this by half another time. Okay. I'll recommend you using your your Toby pencil to do the drawing first. I'm using a marker so that you can see on the video. Okay, so half you should get something like this. A rule of thumb is to use your finger to create a one finger spacing. So place it by placing a finger. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, like this. So this is one finger spacing. Okay, one finger spacing from the line itself. We're going to make a little mark. Make a little marking. Okay, this will be our where our ground line will be. So we're going to do the same for the rest. Okay, you're going to see me using this same technique for all four drawings. Like this. Okay, I'll say it's something like a semicircle. So a semicircle looks somewhat like this. A semicircle looks like this, right? So we have a semicircle shape. However, for this jewel Changi, it's kind of it's kind of looking kind of different. It doesn't really look so curved. Okay, it looks more in a flattened way. Okay, it looks like this. It goes up, then it goes straight across, and it goes down this way. So you can see the difference between these two, these two shapes. So one is a semicircle. Okay, one is a flattened version of a semicircle. We're gonna do the shape. Okay, going up this way, a curve. And we're going to do a line across. And the curve is going to go downwards again. Notice how I make my curve somewhat equal on both sides. So it goes up, it comes down this way. Okay, so this will be the rough shape of my Zhuo Changyi. Next, what I'm going to draw, this part is going to look, this part is going to be slightly more complicated. We are going to use curved lines, okay. So these curved lines are going to look something like this. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna do this curve line. Can okay, I keep my spacing quite equal throughout? Okay, notice these lines are not exactly straight lines, right? They are slightly curved to follow the shape of the building. This is to make my building look a bit more three-dimensional so that it's not so flat. Okay, so I'm keeping my distance. You can notice that the distance are somewhat equal, right? Okay, just keep doing this step. Okay, don't rush through. Go it nice and slow, nice and steady. Alright, all the way, we're almost done. Almost done. So your lines doesn't have to be equal, exactly the same as mine. Okay, it can be of a different number. So it doesn't have to have the same number of lines as mine, alright? So next, we have done from this side to this side. Now we're going to do the other way. So we're going to do this way. So the curve this time. Okay. So our previous line, our curve is kind of going this way, right? It's going in the direction. Now we're going to do the opposite direction. So it overlaps each other this way. Okay. So we're going to start. Same thing. We're going to start from the left. Do a little bit of overlapping. Okay. If, if it's easier for you to go top down, you can do that. So it's easier for me to go top down this way. Overlapping. As you look, as you proceed, you realize that your lines, as they overlap, they start to form this kind of like a diamond shape. Do you see that? A little diamond shape pattern over here. Okay, hence the name Jewel. So it has a bit of diamond pattern. Going this way. And you notice that it starts to overlap quite a bit, right? As it moves, goes throughout. Going down. Nice and steady. Same thing, you notice I'm not rushing through, I'm just taking my time. Alright, so you should get something in this. So lastly, we are going to draw a line that goes across it. So, but this line is not a straight line, it's also similar, it's going to go like a curve. So, it's going to go something like this. Cutting through the center of, trying your best to cut through the center of each shape over here. So there's one over here. There's another that goes through here. 
Okay, it doesn't really have to be exactly the same as mine. Let's try your best. And maybe a third one at the top. So you get this very beautiful looking shape over here. So this is probably your Jewel Changi itself. So you know normally Jewel Changi is beside it what you normally see the okay the control tower. So as many of you, as many of you can notice that this is made up of a cylinder. So this is a long cylinder shape like this. So a cylinder is made out of two two straight lines like this. So try to make your control tower a bit taller, okay? Not too not too flat, not too short. It should be taller than your actual building itself. Okay, once we have this, okay, we're gonna draw a trapezium. So a trapezium will look something like this. Okay, a trapezium will look something like this, but we're gonna do a slightly curved trapezium this way. So it kind of looks like a muffin, right? Okay, we're gonna do a trapezium. So I'm gonna start from the bottom this way. A line across okay two lines at the side and a slight curve to form the top of our trapezium once we are done we can do another one over here so maybe a taller version so going up this way okay notice that is centralized in the building and lastly we have a sphere so it's like adding a, ice, a scoop of ice cream at the top so it goes all the way to the top a semicircle or a sphere over here so once you're done you can add details to this so those of you who are faster you can actually add some windows to it so i'll add some windows over here one window two windows okay so you can add some details okay so there's about two rows of windows so it's just little squares over here then for the top one we use larger rectangles Okay, larger rectangles and also you have this in the middle you have actually a, a lift for people to go up the tower so very two thin lines for the lift to go up okay so this will be how we draw our draw Changi. Uh, we're gonna start with our ground line again so same thing one finger spacing from the line you make a little mark this will be your ground line after which you will draw a line across like so okay so this time i'm going to make my ground line a bit thicker so that you can see so this will be my ground line okay so for your colors by the base actually made out of a tower it's made out of a, if you notice carefully right it's made out of a cylinder okay a cylinder this way and also a a funnel shape okay a funnel the one that we should pour water in okay a funnel this way so it's made out of a funnel so it kind of looks like a funnel like this so it collects rain water okay similar concept to the jewel changi okay so we have this cylinder plus a funnel okay so we're going to draw this Okay, but if we were to draw every single shape the same, it's going to look a bit boring, right? So I'm going to do three different sizes, okay? Even though the shape kind of looks similar, we're going to do three different, different sizes. So we're going to start with the first one over here. We're going to do a curve and a thin cylinder, okay? You can do bottom up if you want to, or you can go top down. For me, I'm going to do bottom up, so just to show you how it works. So bottom up this way, and as it goes to the top, it opens up like an umbrella like a flower so it opens up like a tree right okay so this we're gonna do one medium sized one on the left I'm gonna do a small one okay to show that this is way further back a small one in the middle this way and lastly we're gonna have a perhaps an even larger one on the right so make use of the space, don't make them too close to one another. You can there's a lot of space for you to use. Okay. So we're gonna do a larger one this way. Okay, so we have these three looking things over here. So it is looking pretty empty. So I'm gonna make now we're gonna draw the details that are inside over here. Okay, like so a little V shape. And a little V shape. 
white markers seem to be running off ink. Okay, a little V shape like this. Okay, once we're done a little V shape, right, we're gonna extend the line into the funnel. So you're gonna do this. It's gonna form a curve. And it's gonna go all the way down to the bottom. This way. So this is one line. I'm gonna try to do another one over here. Going in and down. So we're gonna do a few lines. We're gonna just keep repeating this process. You can have more lines or you can have lesser lines. It's up to you. Okay. So we're gonna have these patterns that goes into the funnel. Into the funnel. If your lines kind of very if your lines are very close to each other, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. So you can have something like this. A V shape. So you have a nice pattern this way. So we're going to repeat this process for the rest as well. So maybe this time I'm going to try a different method. I'm going to try drawing the V shape first before I draw the lines. So that I know. Okay, so I'm going to draw the V shape. Perhaps this this is slightly better. Okay, so, so it's starting to look like our gardens by the bay, right? So we're going to do little V shapes for this as well. V, 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 V. You notice that my V shape is kind of in a curved manner, right? Like a curved pattern. Okay, after which I'm going to draw lines that lead down to the bottom. Okay, and lastly, you have these funnels. So, but we are not done yet, okay? We are not done. After we are done with this, we are going to draw a curve that goes across this way. So, we're going to go a curve line that goes across. Okay, so that's one. And we're going to draw a bottom curve this way to show that it's a funnel. So, we're going to do one here, one here, one here one here so there's one two three four you're going to repeat the same for the rest one two three and four and lastly one two three four okay after you're done with this there's one last thing that i would like to add is probably the bridge okay there's a bridge that actually connects these towers together for people to walk on so we are going to do a little little bridge, bridge over here. So this little bridge. So this is for people to walk around. So this this is how I would draw. Kind of same, thing, so same thing from the bottom. We are going to do a one finger spacing from the edge of our paper. We are going to make a little mark. Okay, this will be our ground area. Okay, so the Singapore fly is actually like a ferris wheel. Okay, so we have ground and next we have our we're gonna draw the circle first okay we're gonna draw a, a circle so you can either use a stencil I've already made a little circle marking so I'm just, just gonna trace it over okay I'm gonna trace over this circle okay our I wouldn't recommend trying to draw freehand at the start because the circle might might take quite a while for you to to get a hang of it so it's best to use a stencil at the start okay if not you'll spend a lot of time on the circle itself so just roughly like a circle it doesn't have to be a perfect circle right you're gonna have two things this way like a very thin and tall triangle thin and sharp triangle this way okay this and another line over here this is the building to hold on to the whole ferris wheel itself. So this thing will rotate, will spin around this. But this doesn't change, right? This is fixed to the ground this way. Okay, so now what we're going to have, we're going to have little lines leading from the center to the edge like this. So we're going to do two lines for each part. Okay, so let's step from the middle this way. One line, two line, mid to the center. Okay, we're going to do another one over here. These two lines are closer, leave a bit of space. One line, two lines, lead to the center. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're just gonna keep repeating this process. One line, two line, okay.
Ferris wheel itself. But before we actually do that Ferris wheel, we're gonna do a, a little thin a little thin line just right outside our curve. Okay, so go nice and steady. Okay, just a little thin line. If you're not confident about this step, you, you can actually skip this step, okay? You can go. So after watching me draw, you can decide whether you want to do this step or not. For me, I like to do this step because I think it adds a bit of uh, more details to our Ferris wheel itself. Okay, so we add a little curve. Go nice and slow. If you rush through, it's going to be very difficult. So just take it nice and slow. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And lastly, you see this thinner lines that we have, we're just going to add a circle for each. So this will be our, where people are going to ride the ferries wheel on. So these two thin lines, not the bigger space, right? We're going to do in the, each two, in between these thin lines over here. So one, two, then I put one over here. One, two, I put one over here. One over here. One over here. One over here. And one over here. So this will be our Singapore flyer. So lastly, we have the one of the most iconic buildings in Singapore right now is the Marina Bay Sands. Okay, so very quickly, this is gonna be a bit uh, more complicated, so I need you to follow very closely. Same thing, we're gonna draw, we're gonna make a little marking from the bottom as our ground line. So let's start with that. One finger spacing. Make a marking. Okay, this will be our ground line. Alright, once we have that. Okay, for this one over here, it can be quite tricky. So I'm going to start with explaining what this roughly looks like. Okay, basically this Marina Bay Sands is a, a boat at the top with three tall towers. Okay right beneath it supporting this uh, long boat at the top so we're going to start by if you're going to draw from the bottom up you're going to have you're going to have difficulties because maybe your towers are not of the same height again you might be one might be taller than the other so it's not going to be very nice looking so we're going to start from the top same thing we're going to make a little marking from the top okay one finger spacing so this will be roughly we're going to leave a bit of space here leave a bit of space here we're going to start from the top over here we're going to start with our little boat okay so we're going to do a long boat so the front of the boat is shaped like this it's made out of curve okay a curve this way and after which we have a long straight line across so you can use a ruler or you can do it freehand I'm just going to do it freehand because I've already done my sketch before that. So I'm just going to trace over this way, a long thin line. Okay, this will be the length of my boat. So the boat is going to be quite long, right? Because you're going to make sure there is enough space for three buildings to be underneath it. So it's going to be quite long. Okay, after which you're going to do the tail, the, the back of the boat. Okay, so you're going to have this shape. And we're going to connect this line all the way across. So we're going to do this. Line all the way across this way, so you get this shape. So it's a very nice, thin, and long boat. After which, we're going to draw the a little details at the top. Okay, a little top details at the top this way. Okay, you're going to see these two uh, rectangle shapes. Okay, at the top. Once this is done, okay, we're going to do we're going to space out our little. Uh, we're going to divide this into three. So we get three equal parts of so one, two, and three. Roughly enough space for three buildings. We're going to draw two little tiny lines below, just below this, this structure over here, in the middle, to support the middle. And lastly, these two over here. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six very short lines. Okay. Once you're done with that, we're going to do a line across this way. One, Two lines and three lines slightly longer slightly longer lines all right and we are going to draw the actual building itself so it's a okay watch how this line goes okay we're going to do a line that goes straight down this way straight down 
until it reaches the bottom, it starts to go slightly to the left. This way, alright? And the one on the other side goes straight down, all the way down straight. So one is go down and a little bit of curve, one goes straight down all the way. So we're going to do the, for the middle one, it's going to go this way, straight down. Okay, so the middle one has no change on both sides, both are going to be quite straight. Okay, and lastly, for the third one, it's going to go down this way, straight on one side, but it's going to do the curve on the other side. So we're going to go down and it's going to curve outwards this way. Okay, so it curves out this way, curves out this way. Once you're done, you can add this additional line over here. Like this, this curve. For all three buildings, the same. Okay, so this will be the basic shape of your marina basins. So it's kind of missing, missing some details, right? So you line across, line across, leaving some space. I'm going to use a thicker line, thicker marker. Okay, so we're going to do straight lines down. So maybe you have enough space for two lines, okay? So one line over here, go all the way down. Maybe you can squeeze in three lines instead. Okay, so you have three lines over here. Maybe same thing, one, two, and three. One, two, three. You can use a ruler for this. And lastly, one, two, and three. So that will be our Marina Bay Sands. So some other things you can see at the top, probably some little little trees that they grow. So it's like a little Y shape. So you can draw a little palm trees that you grow at the top right near the swimming pool so you have your little trees over here so once that is done you have your four buildings over here so once again okay you have your jewel changi you have your gardens by the bay singapore flyer and marina bay sands okay i hope you enjoyed this tutorial stay tuned for more thank you and have a good day